Hello YouTube. This is Tammy Pie and I'm back with another video. This is going to be a video, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this yet, but this is, um, I want to compare my latest uh, Welkin tarot deck, the Star Trek tarot, um, the original series, uh, to two other television series decks I have. Which hopefully will be interesting. I don't know if you'll be interested, but if you're not, hey, no harm, no foul. Um, so the other two television series tarots that I have are the Game of Thrones tarot. Um, Ta-da! And of course... What has up to now been my favorite supernatural tarot? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, television series. All right. So, um, Star Trek, of course, was the uh, the great sci-fi series. Uh, the Enterprise going on a five-year mission to. Check out worlds we've never seen before or whatever. So, since I was born in the mid-60s, early to mid-60s, this was something I watched on television. Um, probably more in syndication in the 70s, but I remember watching it as a small child, as does my husband. My husband remembers he and his brother sneaking out of bed so that they could go silently and watch Star Trek with their father. Um, and then, of course, uh, The Supernatural, which is a... Um, it's a buddy comedy drama that went on for 16 seasons. Um, and it pulls in all the zillion horror movie tropes um, from vampires and werewolves to spooky cars to ghosts to uh, you know just all the stuff all the things um, aliens all of it everything you could possibly imagine has been done on Supernatural that is the longest running of these three series and then then the one in the middle, Star Trek, the original series, only ran for three seasons. Um, it had, funnily enough, exactly 78 episodes. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> then there's the Game of Thrones. And the Game of Thrones, a couple of years ago, was the biggest thing on TV. The final season of Game of Thrones was talked about and tossed around and people were so upset. Blah, 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 blah. Um, whatever I, I really enjoyed the show that was one show I watched from the beginning every week tuned it in oh my god what's happening this uh, this week great kind of medieval fantasy land um, very interesting kind of uh, world that they created with parallels to actual historical places and figures um, but not a real world and that I think the last season was season eight I think so so with these television series you you have to admit that they have to write them to appeal the majority of people which is part of the reason why I think they layer over tarot so well is because the writers are having to connect with people all the time, right? They're having to, um, in, in Star Trek's case, they were taking on bigger issues with our country and our religion and our politics. And um, they broke a lot of the kind of hard and fast rules in Hollywood at the time 
which they had a hard time with. Um, the, the book that Chris Leach wrote is actually really interesting because it gives you some background information that, you know, he must have done quite a bit of research. And I think he did such a beautiful job um, layering the Star Trek series over the tarot. Um, the readings that I've done, the last couple of readings of the Star Trek tarot have been, wow, just that layer of Star Trek really added something to the readings that I was doing. And I, I don't know if that has to do with me being super emotional right now because it's it's a rough time for my family and for my best friend's family and even harder time. But uh or if it's because I'm, you know, spending a lot of time watching the old series, reading the book, I'm very interested and connected with these, um, these stories and the cards and how that time, the late 60s, is so very like this time that we're living in now. So... I'm going to right here splice in where I opened the box for the Star Trek tarot and then we'll continue the video in top down and I'm sorry but it's probably going to be kind of long uh, because there's a few things that I'd like to compare that make these tarots different. I think Supernatural tarot reads beautifully. Star Trek tarot reads on another level. And I've always loved Game of Thrones. Um, but I would say in this lineup, it's third. Um, very interesting. I don't know. Uh, your mileage may vary. So I'll see you in a few minutes. So this is going to be some uh, like B-roll, I guess, because I need to open this. <laughs> And I don't know if I'm going to have time to do like a whole thing on it because this is um, the Star Trek tarot. And my husband bought me this before we went on our little vacation. Before my son and I went on our little Vegas uh, weekend. And um, I just haven't had, I haven't had the strength to do any filming, but I did want to unbox it, you know, because this is so cool and I'm anxious to start playing around with it. So this is from, it's another deck from Welkin, uh, this is the Star Trek tarot, the original series. And once again, he always adds in the postcard and the business card. And always the really serious books. Now, the, these cards are bigger than most tarot decks. Um... For instance, this is the bordered version of Deviant Moon. So you can see they're quite a bit bigger. But these books, I think this one's even bigger than the Odyssean. This is the size, this is bigger than a regular paperback, right? Um... It's bigger than your, uh, what are these, Llewellyn's? The Llewellyn by Llewellyn. It's bigger than Llewellyn books, but it is far thicker, um, which speaks to the amount of thought that goes into choosing these uh these scenes from the television show, the original series of Star Trek, which I remember watching as a child. Um, I was born in the mid 60s. So 
this, uh, I believe this show ran from like 1967, something like that. And yeah, this is a major, I, I love this show. This show had all the, every episode had a social message. Um, and when you, when you, I've been watching the show over. Uh, when you watch it now, you see how science fiction affects science reality, for one thing. Uh, you begin to realize how little it took to uh, to be science fiction. These... The bridge, it was just panels with light up things. <laughs> Our televisions now are better than the screens that were on the, uh, on the uh, Enterprise. Ugh, I just finished watching this one. This was such a good, interesting, mind-bending thing. So anyway... Um, this is my third deck. Oh, look at you, girl. Go. This is my third deck that is themed to a television series. And I want to kind of do a kind of comparison. But um, I'll save that for later because right now I have so much to do. Oh, my God. Okay, so these are my two Walken decks. This is the Odyssean and this is the Star Trek. And mostly just the way they have to do with each other is both are based or layered over with um, epic tales. This the Star Trek and this the Greek myths. Uh, but they both are color-coded um, by the elements. And the... Um, the Welkin Tarot that I have, the two, are both, um, they've taken the court cards and just called them 11, 12, 13, and 14. And then kind of given them their own uh, identity. But it works with the court system. Okay? So, uh, we're going to look at that because it's like, it's like the elephant in the room. I can't, uh, I can't not look at it. But uh, first, I just want to um, appreciate this deck for a second. This is, <laughs> this is so cool. It's so interesting. Uh, I really enjoyed with the Odyssean. Kind of guessing what the myth was that was attached. This one I remember, where the, the population was so high. I haven't seen that episode yet in uh, in my re-watching of the series. This one I recently watched, The Apple. Um, haven't seen this, but I remember it. Uh. I haven't seen that one yet. Mud's Women We Saw. I can totally relate to that. Not wanting something that's offered. Um, this I just got in a reading that was fucking tragic. Um, I haven't seen this one yet. This one was really good. Justice. This one was really good. Taste of Armageddon. Um, so some of these I hardly remember. Some of these I've recently seen. Just watch that one again. As the Six of Fire or Six of Force in this deck. Um, who mourns for Adonais? Yeah. Which that's actually kind of an Apollo character. Apollo the Greek god. This is a really good episode. I very much enjoyed that. Uh, I Mud, which is a later episode. 
Cat's Paw, I have not yet watched. Where No Man Has Gone Before. Oh, this is such a good, such a memorable episode. You know, this, this guy turns into basically a god. And because he's Kirk's friend, Kirk doesn't want to do anything about it. It's a trip. Uh, all Our Yesterdays. Got that in a reading. It was amazing. Uh, Trouble with Tribbles. Do we all remember this? Most people do. I mean, if you don't remember any other thing about Star Trek, Tribbles is something people remember. Uh, Earned Mercy. Wow. That is, that, it, this is some deep stuff in Star Trek. Earned of Mercy, this is about a people who is advanced to the point where they're willing for their entire world, their entire culture to be destroyed because they don't believe in violence. They're not going to fight back because they don't fight. They just don't do it. And it's really interesting, the twist in that. Um, the alternative factor. This is where Chris Leach... <laughs> Adds something of his self into the Star Trek tarot ad hoc. And that is, this is one of those, do you ever like watch a show and then you, you notice, oh, the writing isn't particularly good in this one. The directing isn't particularly good in this one. The people must have not been feeling it when they were filming this. Uh, and that's how this feels. This feels like, like... Oh, man, they, they must have had a bunch of rewrites so that no one knew what was going on in this episode. And the author picks up on that and chooses to call it the hangman and it adds something to it. I got this in a reading, too, and it's really good. <laughs> uh, let that be your last battlefield and very memorable episode. Um Let's see, what else? Oh, God, this was heartbreaking. Conscience of the King. Really good episode. This is pretty perfect for strength. Him with the dog in the dog suit. <laughs> and the children shall lead as the Four of Cups. Very interesting to, to put that there. Arena. This is, okay, so... I haven't said anything about the other Star Trek, the original series deck that's out there. And it it was the one that interested me originally. OK, this is one of the few cards that they both agreed, both authors agreed would be just the, the perfect card for this uh, archetype. The seven of wands or the seven of force in this deck. City on the edge of forever. Oh, God. What a sad story. This was intense. Oh, a mock time. As the two of swords, or in this deck, the two of logic. If you know the story of this episode, it is so perfect for that. Oh, MG. <laughs> this side of paradise there's jill ireland there Ugh, gotta love her wow um miri as the six of feeling or the six of cup six of water wow yes perfect wink of an eye tholian web the doomsday machine this is another one that both authors had to use as the the uh tower card right it's just the perfect tower card and i believe this one too is a repeat uh the squire of Goth gotha says the fool oh i just finished watching this perfect for the two of water or the two of cups i mean this <laughs> this deck I have just been having the best time the best time perfect I mean he had to look ahead he had to look to the future and figure some shit out 
what is better? The menagerie as the four of wands. What? The, the double episode, the menagerie, is where Chris Pike ends up um, getting back onto that planet where the people could, like, let him have his life back. Really cool. Oh, my God. So some of these I haven't seen yet. Of course, the Ricardo Montalban I had to watch. Um, this was great. Khan, the Space Seed. Uh, Balance of Terror. Five of Air. This is just a stupid battle where the guy lets himself die for no fucking reason. What are little girls made of? The reason this is the high priestess is so good. Oh my God. The book is so interesting. This is Nurse Chapel, right? Did we know that she ended up marrying Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the series? Did we know that she was also the voice of the computer? Oh my God, so interesting, such interesting stuff. Dagger of the Mind, I drew today, wow. Uh, as the Hierophant, re Return of the Archons, this was so perfect, so perfect. Okay, so uh, hang on just a second, I want to, let's, let's go ahead and jump into this whole, because um, the only cards you haven't seen are the courts, right? Okay, so uh, what I have here are the courts laid out. This is the Star Trek tarot, of course. This is the Supernatural tarot. And this is the Game of Thrones tarot. And we have here... So with Game of Thrones and with Supernatural, the authors just took the, um, the archetypes and they gave us uh, characters from the show that match with the archetypes and they, and they do they do okay chris leach's decks go a little further they um he makes the um all the 11s or the pages first of all i like that he did that i like that he took away page knight king queen he didn't add in mother father sister brother because that doesn't work for everyone. It just doesn't, it doesn't work for everyone. Okay. But, uh, so he just put it back to 11, 12, uh, 13, 14. Okay. However, there isn't, we didn't, uh, lose our identity. All right. So the pages are all integral um, crew members people who in the crew of the enterprise are so important and so memorable so we have Chekhov as page of fire and this is him in particular in the specter of the gun okay here we have Uhura as the page of cups Right? She's the communicator. She knows all these amazing languages. And God knows, as a black woman in Hollywood in the late 60s, hello. Uh, and in particular, in the episode Plato's Stepchildren, we have Sulu, our notoriously gay uncle, who had to, like, suppress it while he was on that set because... They weren't into it, right? Late 60s. Hello. And Janice Rand. And in particular, this episode, Charlie X. Okay. Where she is. Yeah. Okay. So that is the page of Earth. Okay. All right. So in Supernatural, we have these... <laughs> These amazing characters. This, this is like the the super fan. This is the amazing um, prophet, the intelligent kid who solves all these problems, and the page of pentagrams. These are the guys who are just they're ghost hunters. They're just so excited. They're such 
such cool guys. Okay, so, and then, uh, in Game of Thrones, we have the, uh, that soldier as the, as the page of wands. Uh, we have, um, which Stark kid was this? This is the one who becomes the, the, uh, the eye of God or whatever the hell they call him. And then the, the mask guy as the page of swords. And, uh, of course the, um, the youngest boy in the, um, we always pay our debts family, right? All right. So and then we go to nights. <laughs> okay, so uh, Chris Leach in the Welkin Tarot does um, the knights are going to be creatures. They're going to be um, these creatures that the Enterprise encounters in uh, some of its episodes. So immunity syndrome, this giant amoeba thing, the Horta. Man, if you love Star Trek and you remember this episode, this was such a good episode. For this to be the Knight of Cups, wow. That, but that just, that adds such depth to the Knight of Cups. I can't even. And then Mirror, Mirror. Mirror Spock as the Knight of Swords. This was the only guy in the alternate universe where the, the I think, Kirk, Uhura, Bones, and Scotty are all, they're beamed up to the Enterprise and they end up in a mirror world where everyone's like bad, badass warriors and mean and torturing each other and all this other stuff. But Mirror Spock is the one guy that knows what's going on. Oh, so good. And then, oh, this one, Nomad in the Changeling as the Knight of Pentacles running through space, damaged, running into another thing and rebuilding itself and making its own uh, programming so that it ends up being this amazingly strong machine. Wow. Just wow. Really Great shit. And then uh, here we are in the supernatural. Also really great choices for these knights. Ugh, I love this guy. Um, Knight of Blades. This crazy girl. Knight of Pentagrams. The demon that starts it all. Ugh. Okay. And then uh, the Knight of Spears is... Um, What's his name? The, the main guy. I, I can't remember the names anymore. I'm sorry. I didn't. And then the Knight of Cups is the uh, the Knight of Flowers. And then the Knight of Swords is this horrible guy. And the Knight of Coins is. Uh, what's her name? The, the Lady Knight. Oh, it was so good. Okay. So you can tell I'm totally into star trek right now so i can't remember all the characters from the other places but still still when you when you have television series um and i know there are other decks that have layered on this series you know there's golden girls there's buffy friend you know a, a bunch of stuff that that i don't have um but i watch those shows and so we all kind of have that oh yeah I remember that I remember when that happened and it it layers on to our tarot knowledge whether we want it to or not it just happens okay so in the in the uh Game of Thrones I think there's the least change in the suits uh supernatural is bones goblets blades and pens uh, Game of Thrones is spears, cups, swords, and coins. And Star Trek, because we have the, the colors of those uniforms, right? Um, and which shows they're from different parts of the ship. So we have force as wands or fire, feeling as water or cups, 
logic as swords or air, and will as earth or coins or pence, right? Good, good stuff. Okay, so we have as the queen of wands, Losira. Oh, man, this was such an intense story. The queen of cups, Nancy Crater. This is, um, I think it was Bones's first love. And they beam down to this planet and they're finding guys that are dead because they're, they have no salt left in their body. So she's actually a monster that only survives by taking the salt out of people. And Bones is so enraptured by her. Oh, God, it's such a sad story. And then the Enterprise incident, the uh, Queen of Logic is the Romulan commander. Oh, yeah, she was great. This was, a, this was a really fine actress. Oh, as was this, Miranda Jones. Yeah. Okay, so those are our queens. Here's the Queen of Bones, was like the mother of monsters. Uh, queen of Goblets, this was Ellen. Uh, queen of Blades, this is the top angel. That's She was a great actress, too. She's in all the sci-fi stuff. And then Queen of Pence is, uh, what's her name? It took over for Crowley in hell, right? Queen of Spears. We have, uh, 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 what's her name? <laughs> and then the Stark Queen. And then the, the Gold Queen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I forget all their names. And then the Queen of Flowers, right? Okay, perfect for the Game of Thrones. I got to re-up myself on the names and the people. But really, I am gushing over the Star Trek tarot. So, sorry. So, each of the queens is just women who were in the show that were amazing. Right? Major female characters in the show. And then we get to the kings... And the kings are going to be the four main guys in Star Trek. The four main guys. So for Force, it's Scotty. For Feeling, it's McCoy. For Logic, it's Spock. Because it has to be. And of course, for uh, Will, it's Kirk. All right. And then here, what do we have here? Uh, Metatron, uh, the King of Vampires, Kane, and Crowley. Can't believe I remembered all that. And Ned Stark as the King of Spears. And, uh, what's his butt? <laughs> and the, uh, the White Walker guy and Littlefinger. Okay? So, amazing, 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 amazing. All right. So, <laughs> we have this, yeah, just really interesting way that um, Star Trek has or that Chris Leach has has puzzled together tarot with Star Trek first of all he divided it into the four suits uh, five if you count the Trumps then he did I mean I don't know what what um, what order he did his, his creative process, I have no idea. However, you can see that this was an intricate puzzle that he put together, right? Um, since he's done so so many decks, 
you know, the, the Gnosis deck, the Dylan deck, the Beatles deck, the New Wave deck, the, um, the Elvis deck, the Shakespeare tarot, the, um, what's the other one that I'm forgetting? Elvis, Dylan, New Wave, Beatles, the Beatles Lenormand, um, Gnosis, Shakespeare. There's a couple more there that it, it just really um, good at giving us, well, the Odyssean, of course. Giving us tarot later, layered in with just a wonderful theme, okay? It does make me want more of his decks. All right, so let's do a three-card layout, all right? Let's ask, um, how will this a uh, big party go that I just was informed about today. Okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> when you layer in the, the tarot meanings with the Star Trek meanings, um, you get a little extra. You get a little kick in the butt, right? So for those of you who are not aware, this um, Return of the Archons as the Hierophant, um, the story is this. Uh, the uh, Landing party comes down to this uh, planet. Um, no one's there to meet them. They uh, end up uh, getting captured by these monk-like creatures. And um, the problem is they are not of the body, um, which they recognize because the people kind of walk around all uh, uh, Stepford-like, Okay. So, and they have like certain greetings that they greet each other with. And whenever the, um, what is the computer's name? Well, you don't know it's a computer till the very end. However, what, what happens is these people are just, they don't dare do anything against the status quo, right? Which is, it's like a, a feverish religion. And in the end, they figure out that it is a computer that was left by the guy that colonized the planet originally. So it's very interesting because, of course, you know, Spock and Kirk and them destroy the computer and say, okay, now you're free. Yay! But what would we do without the structure of the rules and the morals and, and what we, you know, it's a, it's a good question. Um, and also if the rules and morals and everything are being made by a computer, is that ever really going to work for people? Hard to say. Uh, chariot. Um, I vaguely remember this one. This one is the one where they go down to the planet, um, and they turn people into like cubes of salt for some reason. I forget why. But I imagine this is one of those situations where they got to they got to really pull it together to get out of there. And that makes sense. Um and then all our yesterdays is um one where Spock uh recalls being in love with this girl and he has to let her go. He has to go back to the ship and be Spock. He has, he wakes up and realizes, Oh, this wasn't really me, even though this was, uh, someone that he once really loved. 
So he's got to let it go and come back to the ship, right? Fucking sad. Sad shit. A lot of times, there's, there's a lot of sad stuff that happens in Star Trek. So as far as this party that I was just fucking informed of. Um, yeah, I'm going to be going because it's the rules and I got to go. Um, and I'm going to have to pull some shit together, which I undoubtedly will. It's going to be difficult, and uh, I'm going to learn some shit from it, and uh, when I'm done, I'm done, you know, I can let it go, I can drop this shit like a hot rock and get back to my job on the Enterprise, right, so that's what's going to be happening, and uh, I think that's it, I think that's it for now with regard to the three television series uh tarot decks that I have I'm really loving this I really love the layered onness of the Star Trek tarot and uh still love Game of Thrones still really love Supernatural uh but this is my current uh boyfriend <laughs> so thank you for coming